Welcome low ego action heroes. I'm Debbie Levitt from Delta CX. We are a full service CX and UX consultancy. And this is my Axure 10 core skills course. I've been using Axure since February, 2011, and I've been teaching it for many, many years. And in fact, I've been one of Axure's recommended trainers since 2014. This course is designed to take you from super Axure newbie or Axure afraid all the way through to confident intermediate. So if you've landed on this one video, there are many, many others. Please check our Axure lessons playlist for a lot more videos about using Axure. The Delta CX YouTube channel has over 500 videos on it as of when I'm recording this in December 2021, and I hope you'll subscribe and join in some of our live streams. I'm live usually three or four times a week with teaching UX research and design, talking about CX, helping people get into the profession, helping leaders and managers, and of course, don't forget, Tuesday office hours, ask me anything. So subscribe and hang out here. So thanks for being here. Please subscribe and let's jump into that next Axure lesson. Let's talk about how we bring images into Axure. Now, I mean into. If you're used to other systems that have an image outside of the file and there's some sort of relationship where the image is not in the file, there's some sort of connection there, that's not Axure. Axure is going to bring every image you create or bring or every image you have into Axure. It becomes embedded in the file. And this is how some high full fidelity files with real images in Axure get big really fast. And that means that when people hit those pages, all of those things have to load. So my main suggestion to you is remember to make these kind of 1x web fidelity. They don't have to be 2x or 4x. They don't have to be um, super high resolution. They can really just be quite plain. Remember, this is a prototype. So to work with images, just come over here and drag out the image uh, widget from the library. Now, of course, if you don't have an image yet, you can see by default, it makes a beautiful placeholder and you can start typing on it. Pick of my dog. Um, so you can do that. Or once you have that out here, you can double click on it and we can find a file on our hard drive. Now, I uh, definitely want to embarrass myself. So let's find something off of my camera uploads. All right, let's see. Here's Happy Romeo the dog. Now, it notices that this was a large photo and it warns us, would you like to optimize it? That means Axure is going to apply some JPEG compression to it. How much you ask? I have no idea and you can't control it. So basically it's a good idea if you are concerned about the uh, size of your Axure files and you, j and you realize that this, uh, uh, image does not have to be monster high quality, then of course you could say optimize it. Now it comes in at the size that it was. So for me, that was off of my phone camera. So that was 4032 by 2268. I might want to lock the ratio and make that much smaller. There you go. It still says pick up my dog on it. So that's not good. Let's erase that and start again. All right, image. Double click, pick a photo. I'll optimize it, that's my choice. Lock the ratio, 600, but it has come in wide when this is a tall picture. Now, the best way to go is just to jump into style and take a look at rotation and see if we can just rotate it to where it needs to be. And now I can uh, move it over here, move it where I like it. This page is obviously cluttered and silly, but there you go. Now, what if we wanted to crop this? Axure does have simple cropping. You can find crop either by uh, clicking on this and uh, you can context menu click and you'll see crop image. You can memorize the shortcut key. You can come up here to your toolbar. If you included crop, it will be up here. Um, so I'm going to say crop image. Now cropping in Axure is super, super simple. It doesn't have some of the advanced features that you see in graphic software. So basically you are just coming in here and you are dragging this until this has the boundaries that you want. 
And then you are saying, as you can see, your choices here are crop, copy, cut, and close. So I'm going to say crop. You can play around with the other ones yourself. There is crop. And of course, once we've cropped it, we can certainly uh, mess with it, though I've killed the ratio unless I'm going to hold down my shift key. Now I'm holding down the shift key, and there we go. You'll also notice that there is a little triangle here, and that is for your corner radius. So I can do that manually through here, or that number is over here in the style, or you can create a global widget style where maybe some of your images always have the same corner radius, and that way you can apply that over and over and control it globally. Let's have some fun with that. Let's say I create a new style, and let's say certain images are going to get this corner radius. So uh, these might be images. Uh, I'm not too sure what to name it. Let's just call it images, but you could give it a more specific name if only certain images are going to get this. And we could say corner radius, and let's say I do something smaller so you can see it changing. 20. Now we've created a style, but we didn't apply it. So I need to check this and go down to the very bottom and choose images. Now that's got our 20. Now, what else could we do with this? Again, you can play with the global widget styling and see if there's anything else you want to try to do with this, but we could also mess with corner visibility. If you only want to have two rounded corners, for example, we could do that. Now let's go back to something larger and let's give it a little bit of a styled look. So there's that. So uh, you could probably put the outline on it using the line. Um, but now let's play with some other things that we can do with images. If for some reason we wanted this image to be split into multiple images, there is a slice tool. Now it may not be as exciting as other slice tools you've used, but it certainly functions. You can find it in your toolbar. You can find it from your context menu click or your shortcut keys. Now, if I were to put it here, I would get two images right where this split. So there are these two, or I'll undo that. Let's try it again slice image. Now, if I put it here, I'm going to get four images. So remember, two images like this, two images like this, four images like this, four images like this. So decide whether you want two or four images. There kind of isn't a three image choice here. It's going to be two or four. So if I did four images, now notice we've also lost our rounded corners. We would need to uh, reapply our styles, but this means that now that these are sliced, these could be moved separately, whether you're doing this for an artistic reason or whether you have a functionality reason for this, this would be uh, the way that this would work. And that matches the way he felt that day. So you've got simple crop, and simple slice. And really that's all it is for images. If I say I want to bring in an image, I'm just sliding this out and I'm double clicking, grabbing something off of my hard drive, whatever it is and wherever it is. Let's grab this old picture of Spaceship Earth I took a long time ago. Let's say, no, I'm not going to optimize it. Even though it is an old picture at kind of a lower resolution. And I'll say it's 400 across. And now it's going to look like this. And again, I can then crop it, slice it, resize it, apply minimal styling to it. I can hit shift if I want to control that aspect ratio. And now I have the image. Now, based on the size of these two images, the original sizes, that's how much more your actual file is going to go up. So remember, in some cases where you're doing more high or full fidelity and you've been bringing in stock images, pictures of the team, uh, other photos, background photos, you will notice that your actual file is starting to go up megabytes, megabytes, megabytes. That's not necessarily a bad thing unless you are seeing a performance issue 
issue. There's nothing wrong with a larger file if it's not affecting performance. If it is affecting performance and it's taking a long time for these pages to load, then you might want to take a look at optimizing these images or saving them smaller and lower resolution before you bring them into Axure. Sometimes you need to do that. But don't make the mistake of bringing in 2x, 3x, 4x high resolution images into Axure. You don't need it because they're just going to end up on a web screen. And the web screen is not really a high resolution experience. Let's see if I can find what page this was on. Here they are. This is not a high resolution experience. This is a web page based experience. And so we don't need to have super high resolution stuff that we might be preparing for, say, a mobile app or things like that. So I think that covers images. Now let's move on and I'll see you in the next video.